Uh, I'm fed up, so let me just talk for a second. I don't think the church talks enough about sexuality or sex. We talk a lot about LGBTQ issues, and we get in the weeds on that kind of thing. And even for me, it's like, that's something that, oh, I, I'm going to talk about on my YouTube channel. But why don't we talk about more um, the fact that we are created sexual beings? Like, that is an intrinsic part of how God designed us. I think this plays in so closely with purity culture. And if you guys didn't grow up in purity culture and you're not really sure what that is, to me, I can summarize it as just the legalistic approach to sexuality. So it was really a fearful, um, just a, a scared, like we, we don't want to do something wrong. We don't want to make a mistake. So let's just tell people that sexuality is kind of bad and stay away from it. It's dangerous and, uh, and just kind of suppress everything sexual or any kind of conversation around anything sexual until you're married and then you can figure it out. And I just think that's been that at least in my life personally, but I've heard from other people as well that have experienced the same thing. Uh, it's just so harmful because it's, it's intrinsic to how God designed us. He, he designed us as sexual beings and yet we don't talk about that. Okay, well, wh why don't we? I think, number one, because within the church, we don't know how to. Like, we we're, were like, okay, um, I got to talk about uh, sexuality. You're having these, you know, feelings, but it's like, oh, I don't know. Is the Bible okay with this? I'm not sure. Um, so that's why we need to get a little bit of grounding in the word of God. Yes, sexuality, sexual expression is supposed to be reserved for the covenantal relationship in marriage. Absolutely. The challenge is, is that in our modern day, we're experiencing so many sexual temptations, whether that's pornography or masturbation or just other kind of sexual, um, you know, tendencies, whether that's, uh, you know, homosexuality or same-sex attraction, people are experiencing these sexual urges, these sexual temptations, and yet we're not giving them tools to deal with them. And maybe some people are, and that's great. I, I, I'm so thankful for those folks that are doing that and are having those conversations but I'm talking about more widespread. Are we having the tough, awkward conversations? Like even about masturbation, um, like we, I've never, I've never heard anybody outside of an online context talk about masturbation. I think that's the beauty of the online space is that we're able to have a lot of the conversations that maybe we're too embarrassed about having in person. But at the same time, if that's it, if you're only getting all of your information online, on YouTube, on this YouTube video, I feel like you're missing out on, on a core aspect of what it means to grow with one another and talk about these things. And this is a part of who we are. You know, I think about, you know, something like masturbation, just talking about that a little bit and how so many people, both men and women, struggle with it. And yet, kind of like, really, it is only addressed for the guys, um, very rarely for women, and also pornography as well. Pornography usage, we talk about that for guys all day, every day, in a lot of ways. Uh, but it's always kind of, it's never real. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I want real conversations. I want real, like, you know, get in the weeds of like, what, don't just kind of be like, yeah, it's not super good or it's not, it's bad for you and don't do it and trust God and like, just get over it or whatever else. Like there are deeper issues here and deeper struggles and, and kind of healing that needs to take place, but it can't take place if we never talk about it. That is something I'm convinced of. So instead of me just continuing to rant on and why we don't talk about this, let me just talk about it. I think in, for me personally, um, my sexuality, uh, like my struggle to not look with lust and and having kind of a, I, I don't know, like maybe a higher sex drive. I'm not even sure. A lot of guys will say that. And I feel like sometimes they use that as an excuse. I'm like, okay, you know, chill on that. Like it's not an excuse, but it's like, okay, this is a real temptation in your life. You, this is a constant battle, right? It really is. And so from an early age being exposed to um, kind of maybe soft core porn, and I became okay with that. Like I, I, it became kind of a, a part of a rhythm of life where I would watch it for a while and then I become convicted. Then I stopped watching it for six months, but then I'd get back into it. And I think there was something in me that said uh, like, I, I, you know, hey, at least I'm not looking at 
that really bad stuff, right? I'm, I'm not looking at like, you know, um, Pornhub stuff or looking at like hardcore stuff. It's like, this is okay. And in so doing what I was doing, I was searing my conscience. But at the same time, I was also getting messages online in the Christian space that were like, you got to not um, like be fearful of sexuality, right? Basically. And uh, even to the extent of like a hug being sexualized, like this is something, should you hug before marriage? Is this something that uh, is okay? And you got to just think about the, the trauma that that does to somebody when they're taught that like a hug is sexualized and just like as a, like even like a 16 year old questioning, man, what is okay? Is it even okay to date people? Because like that's dangerous too now, apparently. But at the same time, you, you're living this kind of life where you're trying to do all the right things externally. Like you're trying to be the good Christian kid who just who doesn't go across the line. But then you're kind of letting out all of that those sexual urges in private, in isolation, where now there's this double life going on. And, and, and that's agonizing and it's painful and it sucks because you feel like, man, I can't admit that I'm, that I'm experiencing this, that I'm, that I'm engaging in this disgusting, you know, stuff because we, we just don't talk about it. We just don't have those kind of conversations. And for all I was concerned uh, growing up, my my guy friends, it, it wasn't an issue for them. They were good. They were okay. I come to find out later on that that you know that we all kind of were struggling in this particular area, but we didn't really speak up about it. Going back to kind of the the pornography thing and the seared conscience, I, I, I was allowing myself to watch this stuff because I felt like okay, at least it's not as bad as you know this other stuff, right? I, I was trying to still hold on to this good Christian persona because. I thought that that's what God needed me to be. Like he wanted me to be perfect, to be um, completely pure. So I, even when I, though I wasn't, I tried to convince myself that I was, I, I was okay. I was good. I was better than other people. So God, look at me. I measure up. I'm okay. But the truth is I wasn't, I wasn't sexually pure. No, I, I wasn't even close. And, and the fact that uh, these messages were so kind of put into me in what I was watching online. And I mean, my own fault. Hey, it was what I was watching. It was what I thought was right. Um, like the fact that these things were so drilled into me and I and I clung so deeply to this idea of, of wanting to be good, I wouldn't let myself acknowledge my own sin and actually find healing from it. And that was the big piece for me where I think uh, there's so much shame and there's so much guilt tied up to uh, sexuality that is like, especially in isolation, if you're, you know, stuck in a cycle of masturbation or watching pornography, there's so much shame connected to that. And also the, the challenges as well is that it's now um, sexual pleasure is now connected to uh, the shame, right? So you, you, you climax, you get to this point where you feel this great, oh man, I feel good, right? But then you experience this deep shame and this deep guilt and that's the correlation. And you just think about taking that into marriage, you understand why the couples need to work through this. There needs to be sexual healing. There needs to be sexual redemption because uh, you experience that in the right covenantal relationship. There's sexual pleasure, there's climax, but then you, you have that same feeling of like, oh, there's shame here or there's guilt here. And that's not how God designed it at all. He, he designed it to be a, a shameless, a guiltless experience because it was his design from the beginning. But because of these distortions in pornography and masturbation and, and whatever else kind of sexual stuff that you can, you can talk about, um, because there's been this distortion, we've correlated sexuality and sexual pleasure with something that's evil and something that's wrong and something that should be feared or avoided or we should feel uncomfortable about. What I want to encourage us to, and I'm growing in this too because it's been a long road, we didn't talk about this stuff in my household growing up as much or at all. And, uh, and that's not uh, to, to blame my parents or anything. Like we're all kind of like still figuring out and still learning. Uh, but that's just kind of my background. So now coming to this point where I'm coming to terms with some of the, the sexual brokenness in my own life, uh, it's hard and, and it's, and, 
And I know God needs to meet me in the midst of this. And I want God to meet you in the midst of this. My hope is that you're watching this video and you're saying, yes, yes. Like I, I'm glad somebody's talking about this. Right. And, and one of the things that's heavy on my heart is that women are left on the sidelines, that they're never really acknowledged or brought into any of these conversations. And even for me as a man, the idea that uh, like a, a girl would, uh, a woman would struggle with this sometimes is hard for me to understand because I was brought up in, in, or the books that I was reading were so focused on this idea that it's only a men's issue. And so there's this kind of a discontinuity there that I'm still kind of working through where I'm like, wow, like all this stuff that I was taught that, Hey, it's only a guy's thing. That's wrong. And so my hope is, is that this would open a greater conversation of being open about our struggles, about the things that we've uh, been through and we've walked through, and yet also understanding that God is in the business of redemption. Like that is his plan. And so we don't need to experience the shame or the guilt of what we've done in our past or what we're struggling with, that we can experience full forgiveness and redemption, knowing that we are God's child and also that he has designed us in a particular way uh, uh, as sexual beings. That's an aspect of who we are. And there can be a right and a good expression of that sexuality that actually images God. How crazy is that? That is amazing. That is so exciting to me. It is such a different message than we should be scared of this. We should be fearful of this. We should um, not talk about this. This should be something that we kind of push into a corner and we never really address. No, 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 no. This is part of God's plan and let's talk about it and let's be um, intentional about not letting people slip through the cracks feeling alone in this because we, we, we've we all been through it, man. It, it, in some way, um, this kind of sexual sin has touched us in some way. And so the real issue, the, the question is for, for you is am I going to be vulnerable enough to get outside of this isolation and actually dive into maybe a, maybe a conversation with a friend or a community where we can be more open about the things that we're, we're walking through because we need each other. We need community, especially in this area. So this was the end of my little rant. I'm sorry if this was a little bit uh, startling for you, if this caught you off guard, but I think it's such an important conversation to have. And one of the things that's on my heart is that this channel would be a place that we would be able to have more honest conversations that you wouldn't just get the PC version of Christianity that's uh, in a nice bow. And, uh, and you can just kind of, okay, great. This was the topic for today and we've all sealed it off and we're all good. I never want that to become what I'm offering you. And I know I've gotten caught up in that in the past. I think what I'm realizing is that God meets us in the midst of our messiness, in the midst of our brokenness, in the midst of our sin. And that doesn't mean that everything is fixed right away, right? There's still the brokenness of sin in our world and we're still navigating it. And so don't feel the need. This is what I'm preaching to myself. Don't feel the need to tie, put everything in a nice little bow and say, okay, you know what? I'm trusting God or God forgave me. So I'm okay because there are deep roots of shame and of guilt and of pride that we're constantly digging up and we're constantly navigating and we're constantly inviting Jesus to say, God, please, you know, do a work here. Bring about healing here. Bring about restoration here. And God is faithful to do it. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, subscribe because I'm putting out new videos like this all the time. A huge shout out to everyone on Patreon. It is because of you guys that I can make this content that is so dear to my heart and my mission of equipping people to follow Jesus daily. If you want to support what I'm doing here, click the link in my description. It would be a huge blessing. You can get access to all sorts of rewards and uh, it would just be a huge, huge blessing for this ministry. So thank you so much for watching again and I will see you next time. God bless.